All right, welcome back to the weekly, the Friday walk and talk. But as you can see, and if you've seen the news, you know that I ain't going to be doing much walking today. In fact, I just uh, went for a walk for five minutes. I had to park. This is the problem with Christmas shopping, isn't it? You have to park the car a little bit further away. Otherwise, you queue for two hours for a, a parking space. And um, then the storm came in. So I just got absolutely drenched. Yes, so it's not just you guys in the USA that have got the worst storm in a generation today, which I think is going to run through to the weekend. Some of the temperatures I heard on the on the news were absolutely outrageous. So I hope you got that wood burner, guys, that I've been talking about for almost, what, 18 months or so now. I hope you got that wood burner installed because uh, you might need it this weekend, especially if you get very deep snow. But actually, the UK as well, we've got a massive, massive storm. It's not once in a generation, but it is going to be cold. I think here's the temperatures. Um, Scotland, if you're in Scotland, minus 17 degrees Celsius on Boxing Day. Actually, I said this last year and the Americans and Canadians said, what's that? What is Boxing Day? Is it like so many people? Is it like a boxing match? No, it's not a boxing match. Boxing Day in the UK is the day after Christmas. I don't even know why it's called Boxing Day. But this is where a lot of families get together. Maybe Christmas is immediate family. Boxing Day is sort of more extended family. Or people just go Christmas shopping. After Christmas shopping on Boxing Day. So that's basically what it is. But yeah, minus 17 degrees Celsius in Scotland. But in the USA, it's saying you're probably going to get somewhere in the region of minus 11 degrees Celsius. So... Scotland's going to be six degrees negative on that. Uh, so 11 degree, minus 11 degrees Celsius is 12 degrees in Fahrenheit uh, in the USA. So what else are they saying about this storm then, this massive storm coming through? Um, Christmas without running water for hundreds of thousands in the UK, apparently. Some of the coldest and snowiest weather in 20 years some of them say in 10 years and even your pipes will burst this is what we're being told your pipes are going to burst because it's going to get so cold i was actually talking to someone well i overheard a conversation as usual about this and people are talking about this freezing winter and this oh, all this and they're saying oh it's all global warming and you know i always love it when i hear that global warming because i i, I always like to ask lots of different questions to different people on both sides i always find it interesting to hear the debates and uh said well isn't global warming why why is the winter even cold Shouldn't, wouldn't the, the winter be a little warmer and people just look at you really blankly they're like um i'm not sure but we've got a christmas poem this year it's a little bit different from usual if you've ever heard these beautiful poems over the years all about christmas time just so eloquent, lovely things they talk about. Well, this year's poems are a little bit different. Let me just read this out. This is from Pam Ayres. Well, happy Christmas, mateys. You can't get on a train. The border force is striking, so you can't get on a plane. The nurses on the picket line feel underpaid and wronged. And if you need an ambulance, the wait could be prolonged. No turkey on the table, the blighters got the flu. Here's a yuletide sausage, one'll have to do. Let's raise a glass of water with blankets on our knees and drink to festive merriment as we gently freeze. And I think that sums up the sentiment of a lot of people, especially in the UK and, and Europe, this year for Christmas. And Christmas is one of those really weird periods that you either love it and you just remind, it reminds you of such happy memories or, you know, it's sad for a lot of people, I know. So I just want to wish you a happy Christmas, uh, whether you are celebrating or not. But from my wife and I, we hope you have an amazing Christmas this year. Hopefully you got some stuff to do. Maybe some play some games with the family uh, this year. Maybe do some jigsaw puzzles. 
get the board games out and all that sort of stuff. And if you get absolutely desperate, for those of you who have bought my stock market course, my finance course, and haven't watched it yet, I know there's a lot of you, uh, you can actually start going through the course if you get absolutely bored after Christmas. So let's talk about a couple of stories this week then. We'll start with the FTX collapse. Goodness me, I think that's gonna, that's like the gift that keeps on giving. That's just gonna keep going on and on and on for a long time. So Caroline Ellis, is that her name? Caroline Ellis? or Ellison, um, Harry Plotter, as they're, as they're calling her. Goodness me, she turned, didn't she, on uh, Sam Bankman about to get fried. But you know the thing that, I mean, here's what I don't get. Everyone's talking about it and the case and everything that's about to, to happen. Why is no one talking about the elephant in the room? The most obvious thing here. Bail was $250 million US and he made the bail. Hold on, hold on. The guy's meant to be bankrupt. He's broke. There's no money anywhere. You know, he, he, he didn't give money to his parents. Wink, wink. Of course he didn't. But yet, he's made bail for $250 million. I mean, has no, why is no one picking up on this? Is it just me? Well, I, I, I don't know. I don't get it. The whole thing is just crazy. In fact, it's almost as crazy as the new uh, protest movement that's going around at the moment, smashing up petrol station pumps. That's a very interesting one if you haven't seen those videos. And talking of crazy, not not just this storm going on, and hopefully you can't hear it. I've got the, the blocker on here, so hopefully you can't hear all the rain, and I'll edit it out afterwards anyway. But another thing that I thought was absolutely madness for the Americans watching over the last, well, over the last 24 hours, the $1.7 trillion spending bill uh, has just passed in the USA. I mean, these guys are just going to print the dollar into infinity. It's it's baffling. It's like, okay, we've we've printed all these dollars, but we're just going to keep going and going and going. Cutbacks? What do you mean cutbacks? Nah, we're not going to do any cutbacks. Make the government smaller. Nah, we're not going to make the government smaller. We're just going to keep spending. Yeah, okay, good luck with that. They can only keep it going for so long. Right now, yeah, the dollar is still the world reserve currency and people have to use it. But you are going to see a lot of countries start moving away eventually. And if the US just keeps printing and printing and printing with this exuberant advantage in the world, uh, I think we're going to see some changes in the future at this rate. But I would love to know, I think this is going to start a bit of an argument here, but I would love to know in the comments below what you think of Zelensky flying to the USA it's so funny how you um, you actually see the media. Some of the media are reporting one thing, others are reporting the other. So some media channels are reporting that he was infuriated or outraged, these were the words they were using, that the US wasn't sending enough aid, you know, however many tens of billions or, or whatever it is now. He was outraged, so he got on a plane to fly to request more. So that's what some media channels are saying. And then other media channels are saying, Oh, you know, he was so honoured by all the money sent from the USA that he flew to the USA to honour President Biden with a, a medal and a, a flag and, you know, all this sort of stuff. It's, uh, it's really interesting to watch. So what did the USA just pass then? Well, they've just passed legislation to give Ukraine another $45 billion in additional military, okay, this is not humanitarian, it's military and economic aid, with a 38, with a, sorry, with a further 38 billion for emergency disaster assistance. And I think that's kind of what people are getting mixed up. You know, when you speak to people on the street or you just overhear conversations, everyone just thinks that the money is going towards humanitarian things. And I think there's a lot of sympathy there, obviously. I think it's, there's all obviously sympathy because imagine it was you and your family or me and my family and we had to move out of our house because, you know, you're getting bombed or there's there's no power, there's no running water, etc. I completely get it. I think everyone sympathises with, with innocent people. But then you have the other side where there's certain countries and certain people trying to bring everyone to the table to have peace talks and negotiations and things like that. And certain people just don't want this to happen. And in fact, it's, it's quite the opposite. Not only do they not want it to happen, pushing for more and more military, more and more spending, more and more dangerous 
weapon systems, at Patriot missile systems, and all these sort of things. And, and I get it, it's a very contentious and controversial topic, it, it really is. And, and I don't really think there's an easy answer to this entire situation that's going on, I, I really don't. I think it's going to be prolonged yet, unless everyone comes to the table and, and, and talks about it and tries to, to put an end to, to what's going on. Changing the subject slightly, although it's on the same trail, back to the UK then. UK public borrowing record number in November. I don't understand why. It's got all these economists, right? There's, there's seven or eight of them here. They've all been quoted by the media. So borrowing rose to £22 billion, which is almost $27 billion, from £8 billion a year earlier. So it's almost three times as much. And all these economists, are, it says they're shocked, you use this word like surprised, baffled, one of my favourite words, because they all expected just smaller increases to 9 to 13 billion. So they're all sort of shocked. Oh, where, where did this 22 billion come from? I mean, how can they be shocked? We talked about this a long time ago, which was that the whole UK economy almost collapsed. And that would have been triggered by the pension funds that almost collapsed, which would have had a shockwave on the entire banking industry. What happened, the Bank of England, just to you know remind you here for recall, the Bank of England stepped in, Andrew Bailey created, went back to QE, so he pivoted when he said he wouldn't, created all this new currency and stopped the collapse. But of course, that increases borrowing. I mean, it's, it's, it's obvious. We, we, we're having all these increases now in borrowing. Now, there's a slight deviation to it because you've got monetary policy and then you've got fiscal policy. But just for ease of arguments, I just want to sort of simplify what's going on here. So it's no surprise that we're having all of these big numbers. Um, and what happens when you create these big prints of money, of new currency? Inflation comes 12 to 18 months later. I said this back in 2020, we're going to have high inflation late 21 and into 2022. And, and now we've got it. I mean, it, it's here. And it's. I've been hearing a lot of people as well this week talk about deflation. We're going to be in deflation within three to four months. I think a lot of the forecasts are just, I, I don't think we are. I do not think we're going to be in deflation at that point. And remember, because a lot of people get this wrong, deflation is not disinflation. So inflation is going up. And then deflation is where you're like below zero, you know, but disinflation is where it's coming down. So just so you, you know, don't get it mixed up between deflation here. So what people are saying is that we're going to go into deflation. That's where your money becomes worth more than it is right now, as opposed to with inflation, your money becomes less and less and less. And this is one of the biggest challenges, I think, for most people, especially retirees who've got savings in the bank and things like that at the moment. Jumping back across to the USA, I thought these were some very interesting statistics then. So... Right now, in a lot of U.S. cities, it takes 10 years to save for a deposit for a home. So that's just a deposit. And, I mean, let's not even talk about London and Toronto and some of these other places, because that's even more than that. Good luck if you want to buy something in, you know, really nice areas within th those cities. Here's the estimates then for first-time home buyers that they need more than 10 years worth of savings to manage a down payment. And again, we're talking very small down payments here in San Francisco and New York City. And it's 12 years for Los Angeles. So the median home values right now in San Francisco, $1.3 million. That's the median, that's the average in San Francisco. Oakland, which is just outside of um, San Francisco. I could tell you some stories about when I went to Oakland to visit a friend of our, uh, my wife and I. And he's living in this $2 million apartment there, a condo, he actually owned it. And, you know, it was just crazy. Getting off the BART, which is like, I guess it's like their train system. I think so. And then we walked to this apartment and we saw three crazy things within the space of five minutes. There was like a burning barrel. So these guys were around this barrel and it was this massive fire under a tree. Uh, yeah, that's what happened. We then saw this guy and his partner, I guess, this you know, man and woman arguing in a car as the car crashed. I think she jumped out through the keys and the car just crashed into other cars down the street. Uh, I mean, it was just crazy. It was just, it was just a crazy experience. But anyway, I digress. 
Oakland, California there. So the mean price there, 848 Thousand, so call it eight hundred fifty thousand dollars. LA is eight hundred and thirteen thousand dollars. San Jose one point two million again, and New York six hundred and eighty five thousand dollars. And I've always said this uh, to to all of you. I don't understand why so many people, especially people that have re remote working, or maybe they only go into the office for one or two days a week. I still don't understand why people want to live in these massive cities where you just gridlock with people. Everything's way too expensive. Your standard of living is a lot lower. Well, it depends, I guess, the standard of living. We could debate that because for me, it's going to be different to what some of you think. But a high standard of living for me is um, low crime, good food available, you know, good farm fresh food, um, lots of nature. So you can just go out and walk around and like, like I do on Fridays, do all these beautiful walks. Uh, it's free and it's fresh air. It, it's to me, that's a good standard of living. But I know for other people, a good standard of living is very different. Maybe it's, you know, you like living in these big, big cities, even though there's a lot of crime and there's a lot of homelessness and, you know, there's a lot of social issues going on things are very expensive but i think you know for some people you, you might like that you might like having all this entertainment on your doorstep and talking of expensive food this one made me laugh so we have a, there's a supermarket in the uk called morrison's it's not like harrods or something you know it's not like going into fortnum and mason uh, to buy some food or selfridges you know it's just like a budget supermarket well this year Remember I said about how expensive Christmas turkeys will be this year or even Thanksgiving turkeys. Why? Because of all the, you know, the bird flu and all the other culling and things like that. Well, in Morrison's then, they were actually selling a turkey for £147. It's called the Best Organic Bronze Turkey and it even had a security tag on it. And this turkey went viral overnight on social media and the comments are very amusing if you want a good uh, laugh about you know the turkey needs to cook itself for that that price and the turkey needs to give me a massage and you know all these sort of comments but anyways it's, it's funny if you want to read the thread and talking of another funny story police just broke into an art gallery to rescue a mannequin yes an art installation which, uh, you know, we're hearing a lot about these art installations at the moment. The Human Meat Project last week, the art installation. But you know the funny thing with these art installations, like the Human Meat Project, if you didn't see that, uh, you can see it on last week's video, is that who thinks of this stuff? That, that's what I'm asking. Who thinks of this crazy stuff? And it's obvious that some people, they don't actually see it as art. They would love to make this a reality. And talking of crazy stuff that people well, have made a reality. There is a new escort app in Germany. Yes, it's called Pepper, but it's similar to a dating site, but, but it's for connecting ladies of the night, I'm using a different word, to clients. So this industry now has 400,000 ladies of the night. Well, actually, I should say men as well. There's probably a lot of men in the industry. And it's worth $21 billion dollars a year this industry in Germany. So I haven't personally used the app, uh, I'm not going to go on the app, but I just thought that was interesting that by legalizing the industry it's become a 21 billion dollar industry and is added to the tax revenues of Germany, which I think right now they need as much uh, tax revenues and income as they can possibly get, especially with all the problems with the heavy industry and not having enough energy. But all right, thanks for watching today. I hope you have a wonderful Christmas period. I won't see you before then, so just want to wish you a Merry Christmas now. So apart from that, take care, God bless, and I will see you next week. Take care. Bye for now.